Hi everyone, and welcome back to another video. So today, yes, today we're taking this red lizard into the Goblin Caves on a somewhat unique quest. This lizard is addicted to all things ore, and specifically, copper ore. We're gonna be doing everything we can to craft a copper set, so on his return to his people, he'll be a very, very popular figure. Among the red lizards, copper has been used quite extensively by alchemists to produce food and even various potions. The ground copper ore itself can become almost a narcotic for many of these lizards as it increases their stamina and strength, but also reduces the amount of time they need to sleep. So, in red lizard culture, copper is used a lot. But many other lizards and humans believe part of the reason why they are so ill-tempered and quite ruthless. Relzarid is right there with them. He does not care. He is here to get copper and will do whatever it takes to find more of that ore. The fact that now he can wear it as clothing is something he wants to be the first among his people to do. So we're going to do everything possible to find Whitefoot boots and riveted gloves. Relzara isn't going to stop at anything or anybody before this quest is completed. He'll be fighting just about everything he sees as the only beings he can trust are other red lizards. Even the blue and green kin are very, very dangerous. Especially blues. Blues believe reds are at fault for leaking of very, very valuable hidden ancient information. However, what the blues don't understand is those humans were already discovering these things. In order to rise up and be strong or stronger than the other nations of the world, reds took it upon themselves to be the warrior race, the warrior lizards. And if the blues cannot see this, They'll be taught the same way the humans are taught via the sword. Red lizards are very much on their own in this world. Them against the world. So, we need to be careful. Everything we see in here is going to be a threat. And these early lobbies are very, very tricky for a level 1 fighter. Considering you have a pretty horrible damage output. And honestly, honestly fine, most times shield is just very poor. Unless you're running defense mastery or shield mastery, whatever it may be. So, the plan is to try to get a Slayer set together as fast as possible to give us a little bit of damage in these early lobbies. We have damage, we have a Warlock closing in, and we need to deal with this guy as quickly as possible. Using our shield, for it's one good use, blocking that Curse of Pain or Curse of Sacrifice, whatever he's going to cast. This Warlock chose a cowardly way out of running. He had a decent weapon, that Falchion would have smacked me pretty friggin' hard, but... Elzarid, Elzarid just pushed the advantage and took control of that situation entirely. Just as I'm mentioning shield being somewhat useless, yeah, you can pressure warlocks and even rangers a little bit with them. And it is kind of nice to have one sometimes in your secondary slot if you just need something to defend yourself with. But generally speaking, I love the movement speed. Red lizards love movement speed, high tempo, aggression. And that is Slayer at its core. That is what we'll be working towards. Seeing our inventory, we're already looking quite well off. And truthfully, those white lightfoots is a huge bonus. You need white lightfoots, white adventure tunic, and white riveted gloves to create your first copper set. And that will be huge going forward. Finding these and relying on merchants can be somewhat tricky. The unique thing about this is these are actually craftable right out of the gate. And the vendors actually sell adventure tunics, white light foots, and white riveted gloves if you can get shop changes perfectly. Other than that, we're hoping we can find a couple of these in the dungeon, especially break crates like these. These are what we'll need to be farming to find those white items. Once you get into like cobalt and ruby silver, you need to find blues or greens of those items. And if you don't have your shops, you know, shops rolling consistently, into those items, and I think they're like 50 gold for greens, maybe. You know, it is it is a little tricky to find stuff to craft with. So, generally speaking, the copper is the easiest part of this to get. The hardest part is getting the gear to trade in early, early on. We're going to do everything we can to make that happen. Truthfully, we're already on to a pretty good start. All we need to find is a pickaxe, farm up some copper, and then, and then hope and pray. We get that white, white white foot boot or white riveted glove. And then of course, once we get the full set, we will be going HR. 
So it'll be Copper Lizard, Copper Red Lizard HR, which truthfully I think will be the most fashionable lizard in the entire lobby. We're gonna sneak down and try to clear this quickly. Falchion is not not a weapon I use very often. And uh you need to be a little bit more careful with um spacing yourself, especially with shield. Everything about this setup just feels so slow to me now. I end up getting myself into a bit of a situation, taking way more mob damage, just swinging like an idiot, high on copper. So we deal with it. We have a bunch of meds. I'm not too worried. I still got a campfire, and if I need to, there's a couple health shrines nearby. Generally, I just want to make make haste and get this over with quickly. If we find a decent secondary, unfortunately, we're not running Slayer, so it's not really worth it. As we hear a player approaching just above us. This cleric likely knows there's a player nearby, or else he wouldn't have popped protection. Not sure why he has not looked down here, but uh, we're going to take this opportunity to heal up and then try to push our advantage a little bit with our speed and throwing knives. Lazarid well, is not afraid of a fight. He's going to do everything possible to rid this dungeon of other adventurers. Because, quite frankly, they are competition. And, truthfully, in the grand scheme of things, we need a pickaxe. And there may be one in the guy's inventory, but also it opens up opens up Goblin Caves so that we have more space, more freedom, we can do a bit more looting. And also, if we find another person mining, we will definitely be trying to steal all he has collected, especially from the human race. Moving into this larger room, just to get a, just a bit of a glance at what's going on, it's actually a very good room for us. We have decent movement speed, and this cleric has kind of cornered himself Find himself in a spot where we have lots of room, lots of room to get away from. We're gonna tag him in the face with a throwing knife, which likely did nothing for that protection. But still annoyed him enough. Still annoyed him enough to try to drag him closer. I should be able to land some swings. Land some swings into his helmet before he can get close enough. Even with Falchion Buckler out. We're hoping we hear a hit from one of these mobs, but. Turns out, he is a little bit scared, and it's just going to disappear into that static exit. Unlucky, but we, we chased off another combatant, which will give us more time to grab a few things. Hope, hope we find some white riveted gloves or white adventure tunic. Even finding a pickaxe would be quite nice at this point. We are pretty close to the mining room, but uh, for next run, I definitely want to be doing some mining. Putting everything we can. We are a little bit greedy, so we're going to try to fill this inventory as much as possible. And there are still a few little things here. Any one of these chests could have white riveted gloves. So it's it's kind of necessary to loot all these things where I should maybe just be prioritizing mobs to get ourselves to level 5. As level 5 is when this this really kicks into high gear for this setup. And you feel a lot more threatening. Even though red lizards are always threatening, even with just fists, you do need, you do need that plus five weapon damage to start dealing with plated fighters. Even with white gear, they have decent PDR, and a lot of your damage just gets eaten by that 40 or 45% armor rating. So, that plus five weapon damage is pretty much necessary. We're gonna, we're gonna likely move into a recurve bow as fast as possible, just to give us some spacing for some of the softer targets. Dealing with plate fighters and even, even clerics. Clerics have so much sustain and take so many hits. We're gonna deal with these mobs, trying to get ourselves a little bit more experience, perhaps snag a bit more loot before jumping into that portal. Being a little bit greedy here, we hope there's no other players around, but judging by the kill feed, lobby is likely very, very empty. Truthfully, I'm not a huge fan of the second swing on Falchion. May as well just use the first swing to call it a day there. Second swing with out dual wield feels very, very delayed. Overall, I think Falchion is very, very strong. That's basically because 
it's used by bosses that are generally very, very strong. Plate fighters with a falchion wouldn't really act much differently with an arming sword. If you're in range, you're just going to take damage and trade nothing. Falchion just allows them to space a little bit better, so you can't get inside their swing speed, ink swing radius. And blocking or parrying a falchion is one of the most difficult things, so... It just has other things about it on top of the damage that make it very, very solid. Once it hits you, it's almost, it's almost impossible to get out of reach of that second swing with the slow that's on it. Most other weapons like longsword and even arming sword do not slow you that much, so you need to be moving quite quickly to keep pace. Falchion allows you just to sit there and be a rotating turret of death. And now we do have a decent we do have a decent dual wield setup after selling our collectibles. We got almost 255 gold, which is quite a lot, which will give us plenty of gold to buy our pickaxe, stock up on meds, and then check for some Check for some gear. I will be running doublet just because we are going to be losing dexterity if we do get copper. So my solution for that is run doublet or even I think cloth pants have dexterity. That will basically fix the action speed problems that you get from running copper gear. Hopefully, I mean hopefully we find a decent doublet but chances of finding a green or blue is a little bit rare. The other thing it does, it's a little bit of a psychological game where everyone thinks you're a ranger. So they're afraid to push into melee combat because they're expecting a trap. But also, they don't expect you to push into melee combat as quickly. Because you have sprint, and most times I'm running dual wield while doing this recurve bow setup, you can sprint at someone and catch them completely off guard where they think, oh, this ranger's just going to sit in around that corner forever and sling arrows at me. Which can be a very effective strategy. But generally speaking, I love catching people off guard with a dual wield slayer dressed as a ranger. Now that lizards are back with the 15% headshot reduction, it's even better because no one can tell you're a fighter until you start sprinting or popping second wind. There's just no way to know. It is, uh, it is a very sneaky and mischievous little way to play the game, which I've been very much enjoying. So, speaking of that, we're gonna try to find weapon upgrades. Any any type, not really feeling falchion, and I may just end up going primary weapon arming sword with no secondary and no shield, just so I can keep my movement speed up and play into my recurve bow, which we're gonna purchase here momentarily. Recurve bow is my favorite. It has been the best, and red lizards, red lizards can be very, very good with it. Running Weapon Mastery, dropping Slayer. So it was a nice idea. We we're going to buy a cheap little sword because we can't run the green and jump back in. And this is a decent, a very decent start. And hopefully, hopefully we find some copper to fuel this Red Lizard's rage as fast as possible. I would love to see how copper gloves, boots, and tunic look on this red scaled lizard. 46 damage on very, very basic Reeker bow is solid. It's similar to what our arming sword's hitting for, and basically means we have a nice balance. Once we get, once we get Slayer level 5, things really start to kick into high gear, like I said, and this lizard will show its true colors. We will be flying. I'm very, very excited for it. I'm taking that round shield just in case we get in a situation where maybe we need to push a warlock or a ranger. Generally speaking, we are trying to find our way, our way to the mining caves. Get kind of a rough spawn, and that can happen quite often. And as you may notice, the game's actually bugged for a little bit of time when I recorded this. So there's no loot on the ground, which really didn't bother me. But if someone was doing high roller at this state, that is rough. A lot of the loot you find in the old goblin caves, like this one, this module, is on the ground. A lot of the good loot spots are just, like, items scattered across the floor. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, if anyone full high roller, you were, you were shafted. We're gonna move through and head towards, head towards a decent zone for mining. And hope we can get there and get ourselves some copper. We do find some blue gear pieces. 
which I was finding a lot more of than I expected. It's like the game is intentionally giving you blue and green items to try to force you into HR, which, which is very, very smart. There's no way to use it, so it's worth money to grab and sell. And we get a very nice weapon upgrade and some more stuff we can sell. I'm actually going to keep those, keep that shield just for a little longer. And this room is basically ranger heaven because you have a bridge that's a bridge that's a one-way street into lots of many escape routes. We're going to clear some of this room as fast as possible and hope, hope we see some copper on the ground. I do not see any yet. We've now pulled just with every mob in the room, so we got a little bit of swinging to do. This is a situation where you just don't want to be pushed by another player or hit by a ranger arrow from across the room. It is very, very awful fighting Bola and Archer goblins while fighting other players. Red Lizard can handle it though, and we're going to do a quick little look. Maybe check out this chest, and unfortunate, it's one we need to pick. Don't have a lockpick for. Everything in here looks like cobalt. Or I think that's ruby silver. So, that's striking out on the copper ore. It's unfortunate. The zone starts to push in. It looks so similar to... So similar to copper. I don't even know if you can mine that one. That is fine. We do have a decent zone into the next room as well. So, we'll likely find some there. This is all good leveling too. Try to get us towards level 5 for Slayer. I hear footsteps, and this is another fighter, and a human fighter we are not going to let leave. He blocked quite perfectly, but start to start to put pressure on him with this bow, and just one arrow, even 30 damage, gives us the advantage. If he has to pop second wind early, we can retreat and just keep slinging arrows at him. Unfortunately, our bow is not reloaded, so that is it for that. And now we must bait into a headshot. He gets a little bit, a little bit caught up under my feet, but in the end, in the end, the lizard prevails. Just a couple arrows. All it takes is one or two, one or two arrows to really soften up a target and put the pressure on, where a couple headshots will do the trick. So I've been a big fan of Weapon Mastery, Slayer Fighter. I've dropped Adrenaline Spike, I've dropped Combo Attack, and we are just going full send into Range and Ranger. And of course, entering this room we hear a miner, a miner who dares steal our copper ore. Even just the arousing smell of copper, as this lizard, very, very interested. Also, feeling quite ruthless. It's quite difficult for him to hold back and let this human fighter live. Even these few moments, with each swing of this pickaxe, the rage is growing and growing. Healing up, this lizard knows exactly what he's going to do, because Relzarid is not going to let this man leave with whatever ore he's stolen from these dungeons. Hearing another, hearing another enemy above us, we need to be careful. Play this slow. As difficult as it become, this lizard wants to pounce at any moment on this enemy across from us. Giving him a chance to somewhat retreat. We do not want to kill a man with his pickaxe out. But if we must, we will. Drawing his weapon, we get into a duel. Shield versus shield and sword. <laughs> Trying to get a headshot in, we land one and then another. This guy is likely very weak. Cannot allow his second wind to catch him back up. Landing a couple blows quickly and finishing him off with a headshot from our arming sword. His arming sword was hurting quite a bit, and that little engagement felt very good. If we had Slayer there, if we had Slayer there, we would have dealt with him much quicker. Really, I shouldn't even have had shield out. I do not use it find it is sometimes a gamble if you can't you can't land it perfectly or just you just miss your block slightly it ends your fight and once again the copper copper mist was in the air 
And this lizard took full advantage. Alzard now has to be a little careful. I heard players above us, and we still hear some footsteps as a rogue comes starting through the room. We are almost back to full HP. We don't have second wind. Tempted to campfire quickly. We snag all this guy has to offer and steal all his precious ores. Ores that aren't quite valuable as copper, but still. Still very, very useful. Each, each passing day, alchemists are finding more interesting ways to ground up these powders. Ground up these ores and turn them into into potions or things of just great, great use. Rumor has it that the Greens have successfully, successfully found a brew that combines iron powder with other ingredients that are unknown to the Reds and makes their scales even stronger. Increasing the durability of the Greens is quite, quite interesting. For now, Reds have their speed, momentum, and aggression from the copper. Greens, Greens have their strength and durability from iron. And of course, idiotic blues don't have much of anything yet other than lies. Downing that barbarian, we go back to mining our copper, which is all this lizard Relzarid cares about. Making sure we have space, which we do. Not gonna waste all this copper ore. Each one, each time successfully harvest one of these, it excites Relzarid more and more to return to his people. For now, we must take this slow. Let's try to progress and get our copper gloves and boots on. Bare minimum. Hoping we have enough to craft an item. Tempted to pop this campfire because I do not trust that rogue that was above me. I'm assuming. I'm assuming he heard me. And if I was a rogue in this situation, I would be trying to make the most of my advantage and jump down onto this poor lizard. So, we need to be careful. It has me a little bit spooked. We hear a portal above, and we're actually running out of space. Decide to take it a little easy here. We don't want our portal stolen as well. It's a bit unfortunate. We should have should have likely kept going, popped a campfire, and just mind and mind and mind. However, that rogue darting across the top of my vision has me a little bit scared. So jumping out of this one, we got a pile of ore. A pile of ore we can return with to our people as well to study, craft with. The big one we did find was some copper, which will give us... That will give us two. And truthfully, it was a bit of an error. We were not thinking clearly because we need six, which makes three copper powder to get the lightfoot boots. Very, very unfortunate. We are going to be one away when all is said and done. Which means, which means we need to jump back into the dungeon and we're not even level 5 yet. Which is also very frustrating. Leaves us so, so close to getting those boots. I guess it's actually in fact 4. It's 3 for the gloves. So, in fact, we would not have been able to craft Lightfoot boots. Anyway, we do need riveted gloves. Weather gloves are quite fashionable, but riveted gloves, copper in them, is what we are after. So we're gonna quickly check the check the shop and make sure there's nothing too valuable. We did need to change our armor sword out because it was a green. And then basically just head back in and hope. Hope we can be successful one more time to get ourselves level five. And also, we can escape with two or three, two or three copper powder or six ore. As a huge win. Unfortunately, we get a pretty, pretty rough spawn. So quite a sprint. To try to get, try to get yourself to the mining cave from here. Not only is it quite a sprint, but you're going to be dragging a ton of mobs through, and likely running into a player. Will not, will not hesitate to chop you down as you're dragging three or four mobs with you. It's pretty much the worst. Probably the easiest way to get yourself killed in goblin caves. Sprinting from one room to another, getting yourself in situations cornered by mobs, isn't ideal. So we're gonna have to take this one slow, and maybe we'll find find some very, very valuable pieces. Perhaps, perhaps riveted gloves from some of these chests could be possible. And there's a pile of chests of loot in the next couple rooms. 
We do find this morning star, which is a bit of an intriguing idea. It has the look and feel of a very punishing red lizard weapon. And we're gonna run this for a bit and see just see how it feels. Probably the first time. First time I've ever really laid hands on a morning star in a very long time. It will be much different than Arming Sword, but it will be at least a little bit more damaging or punishing if we run into someone wearing plate with that armor pen. We also find Agi boots, so we're gonna move the Lightfoot boots we purchased from the vendor that are gray in our inventory and switch over to those ones. We will keep them in case we need to run them next game or don't find anything better. But yeah, Morningstar is a slow, slow weapon. And this is when I'm really missing not having dual wield or at least slayer on. Five weapon damage on this bad boy would be very ideal. Or even the attack speed. Help us a huge, huge amount. And we see this guy with a longsword. And generally speaking, longsword users are also wielding or using full plate just to cover just to cover some of their mistakes and give them lots of opportunities to fish for our parry repost. We hear a guy in this room, he just kind of disappears, so we're just going to leave that be for now. As we try to clear up above and loot all these chests looking for the gear pieces that we need. I'm not too thrilled about doing Morningstar into Longsword as the slow, slow overhead swing is almost perfect for them to catch it last second. And even Arming Sword is quite difficult, but Arming Sword has has some quick motions you can drag through the body if you need to dodge around their parry. I hear, hear slappy feet above me. And it's likely a rogue. Likely a rogue once again darting around in the darkness. We do get a bow upgrade, which is quite nice. And then we'll move on to the chest above us. There's a pile of loot up here, and it's one of my favorite areas. If you can clear the mobs without taking too much damage from the archer goblins. In HR, you get two archer goblins and two death beetles, which can be a pain if you drag everything at once, but if you have a recurve bow, you can pull everything and deal with it one at a time. Also, this time we get health shrine, which is nice. And truthfully, it's one of the best areas. If you open all these doors, you have so many ways to escape. If you get yourself in a situation where a player is cornering you with way better gear. You have lots of room to maneuver. Popping all these chests open gives us a little bit. And once again, once again, white white puts. I was hoping for white riveted gloves. White white puts it is. And truthfully, it's so sad. It's so, so sad we did not grab one more copper ore to give us three. If we found riveted gloves at this moment, we could be crafting copper gloves after this game. And I do very much want to see how they fit on Rosarid's hands. Moving around, just giving ourselves some options here. We end up taking a quick peek into this hallway just to make sure no one has moved through there recently. And then we notice we actually missed the chest back beyond. So maybe this is riveted gloves. No, but we do get some throwing axes which will be useful. Especially if we're in a duel against Longsword Fighter. Trying to equip all our throwables just in case. Bit of a bit of a mess trying to manage your inventory with a ton of campfires, uh, pickaxe, and then throwables. I always want to have a few slots open, and we do hear a plate fighter. Thinking he is on the same level as us, he's actually below us fighting a cleric. And he chops him down quite quickly. Now need to land some arrows as fast as possible to take some HP off his bar as fast as possible. We need to chip away everything we can before we engage in melee combat. Do not feel incredibly confident with this morning star, but Ralzard is not going to shy away from any combat he sees, especially an opportunity to rid this dungeon of a human adventurer. Dealing a couple more arrows, we have him, have him retreating. We're retreating far enough where he's likely going to be able to get a bandage off or a health potion. Trying to get close enough to use this morning star. We need to push this guy a little bit while he's retreating. Of course, he switches to sprint, longsword, and now we need to be very careful. Do not have great options as we clunk him once with the morning star. We go in for another, just at the last second. 
Of course, he gets the parry off. Like, the slow swing speed of that Morning Star kind of screwed us. Now we need to retreat with Second Wind and pray we can out-trade this guy at range, as he's also running Recurve Bow. Missing our Throwing Axe, which is very, very important. Missing our second one. This is not ideal as we take an arrow to the face. This is getting low, but so are we. Going for the final hit. And then, unfortunately, we get stuck on the chest below us. Either, what the fuck? It was likely, likely not going to be successful anyway. Those two arrows really hurt. And our arrows just weren't doing enough versus that plate. We basically need to be hitting headshots there in order to get this guy down where we need him. One more Morning Star swing might have done it, but really we needed those throwing axes and maybe another recurve shot to finish this guy off. It was a good, good duel. I very much enjoyed it, but I'm very disappointed we didn't get to see Copper on our Red Blizzard. This guy did well. I just find it so frustrating sometimes against a long sword because you feel like you're doing things well and they just they just click, right click at the last second and catch your weapon as it's about to land in their face. They just rotate their long sword around in a position where it's pretty difficult to get past, especially when using a Morning Star, and then so be it. That is it. But overall, I am going to be working towards getting Copper on my actual main character, as I've been really enjoying dual wield recurve bow mining. And anyone that gets in our way, we just deal with them. This guy likely thought I was a ranger, so he was kind of scared push in, and then as he sprints away, we can match his movement speed to catch up to him. Once again, thank you all for watching another video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.